that's just one of my favorite licks that I'm going to be showing you today from the Jimi Hendrix cover of Bob Dylan's Like a Rolling Stone from the 1967 Monterey Pop Festival. I'm going to be showing you a variety of the clinic, the master class that Hendrix puts on here in adding embellishments and fills to very simple triads, major and minor triads. If you've never heard this cover before that Jimmy did of Dylan, you need to check it out. I'll link it at the end of the lesson. And also at the end of the lesson, I'm going to link a brilliant note for note cover by a guy here on YouTube who just goes by Greg. You should subscribe to him. He does note for note covers of virtually any Hendrix song you can think of. I'm going to be showing you how to put these licks into context, why they make sense in the chord progression and how you can then learn them to use them in other songs, whether your own or other music when you're jamming. If you're beyond that and you want to just jump and, and learn by watching and slowing down Greg's video, by all means do that and enjoy it. All right, let's look at the chord progression first. Uh, Dylan, of course, would have been playing in open position. Uh, the song's in C major, once upon a time, C major, D minor, through the bumps of dime, E minor, in your prime F, G, didn't you? So you should hear that's just a walk up, C, D, E, F, G. It repeats, people call C, said, beware doll, D minor, you're bound to fall, E minor, you thought they were all F, just kidding you. And then it goes back and forth between the F and the G. You used to laugh about F. Everybody, that was G hanging out. And then the walk down, it's basically the inverse of what we did at the beginning. F, now you don't, D e minor. D minor talks so loud, C. Repeat that, F. No, you don't, baby. E minor, feel so proud. D minor, C. And then by having to be scrounging, it's just F to G. Your next meal. And then how does it feel to all the way to the like a Rolling Stone? It's just, just C. So it really is basically a 1-4-5 in the key of C major, because you should know that D minor is the relative minor of F, and E minor is the relative minor of G. And especially the way Hendrix plays those chords. Up here, he's essentially, if you know your movable A minor shape, you bring it up to the five and seven and you have D minor and E minor. Well, Hendrix really plays them as D minor seven and E minor seven, so he can have that pinky available to do hammer-ons. Well, what you then have is an F chord and a G chord of your D shape, right? That's your F and your G of a D shape. So think of it as a, an embellished 1-4-5 in the key of C. All right, what does Hendrix do with those chords? Well, he mainly plays the C here as your A shape bar chord. And a couple things about that to know is, one, if you've never tried it with the pinky, try it. I think you get more comfort and leverage there. This is awkward. Uh, the pinky is how Clapton plays it. Check that out. Also know when you have that A-shaped bar chord, you have this beautiful box always available to you right under, sitting there, right underneath the chord uh, on uh, two frets apart. So in this case for a C chord on three and five. So Hendrix He really makes use of that of that 
he does a lot of little fills there. That one is in the introduction. I don't know how many times he goes back and forth between that C note and the A note, but four or five times. So a couple of things you'll notice right there with what I was doing. One is he adds that passing chord, the B flat, between the C and the F. So this is another takeaway. When you're in a one, four, five, and you're going from the one chord, in this case the C to the four chord, in this case an F, you can go down two frets from your one chord as a transition, as a passing chord, it sounds great. All right, so take that away. Second thing to mention here is you'll notice I'm playing a standard bar chord here for the F and the G. Hendrix does not do that. He basically never does that when he's playing the E-shaped bar chord. He does the thumb over thing. And if you can do that cleanly, God love you, do it. He does it because he keep, keeps that pinky available for, for, uh, for fills and hammer-ons and so forth. Um, I find that hard to do. I mean, I could do it just sitting like this, but if I'm whipping around, it's hard to do cleanly. So most of the time, I'm gonna be just playing what I like to call the F shape, because it's easier to visualize. It's really in cage, known as the E shape, but however you wanna call it, that's usually the way I'm gonna be playing it. If you can do the, the thumb over, then do that, because that's gonna be, that's gonna be authentic. So we'll talk about things to do over the F and the G in a second here, but back to the C. I'm gonna try to organize this by chord. I think that's probably the easiest way. So first thing to know is that box. Second thing to know is the transition chord. Third thing to know is when you're uh, playing the A-shape uh, bar chord. We've talked about in many other lessons, including on Hendrix, that you can slide up two frets from that and you're right into your major pentatonic box of that chord. So in this case, again, it's a C major chord. So you slide up two and you might think, oh, that looks like my A minor pentatonic box. Well, yes, it is, because A minor is the relative minor to C major, so the notes are the same. So at one point, Hendrix... He plays a country band, which I think is so interesting. Uh, it's at the in the beginning when he's just kind of... He's talking about Bob Dylan's grandmother instead of um, making a joke about Mitch Mitchell. He does that, essentially. He does this, does this C major country bend. You're bending the seven, uh, seventh fret, third string while holding down the eighth fret, second string. Release to five, four, and then slide down. Hammer on the open string to the three on the F and come back to the G. I realize I'm getting into F and G licks a little bit, but they are in just now. Your major pentatonic box always lives right above that A chord shape this case of the C major scale. And another thing with the C is he comes up here, plays it uh, again just as I would call an F shape. favorite. 
favorites. Okay, so we're gonna get into the F and G a little bit here. So C, and he's right there. So think about, you always wanna stay in the neighborhood, right? He doesn't wanna go to C here and then go all the way back down here for F. He's right here while well, the F chord's right there, right? Our four chord of the A shape F chord is there. And if you were playing it on the top three strings, It'd be like this, but he doesn't just do that. He does a F sus two, which is just a beautiful little triad there. So we've got 10, eight, eight, and then the chord progression goes to the G, and what is he gonna do? Well, go up two frets. Excuse me, F chord of the A shape, G chord of the A shape, but he's playing them as sus two. And then you can hammer. And I've shown you that hammer on plenty of times from a, a sus two to the major triad. doing that to like really create create a crescendo and since I'm up here I'll show you that crescendo lick that I opened the lesson with and he uses this as a real tension builder and he cranks up the distortion <laughs> It's just essentially an arpeggio of a G sus two there. So 12, 10, 10. And then hammering from 10 to 12 on the second string. That's just beautiful. I just love that. Okay, what else does he do over the F and the G? Well, he primarily plays them down here, as I mentioned earlier. Over the F, he's hammering a lot from open to, to, to the A note, second, second fret. He will occasionally do that D note. Over the G, definitely. All three and also the classic <laughs> Hendrix lick that I've shown you in other lessons. So think about again your F shape of a G chord. I've shown you that lick. Basically what you've got is one, two, three, four, five in the, in the G chord, right? You're taking the two and the five and you're hammering to the major third and resolving on the one, the G note. That's just a real Hendrix classic. Speaking of Hendrix classics, that castle's made of sand lick, he does that in here too. He goes <laughs> something like <laughs> so that's your G add nine. You're just putting your pinky on the fifth fret uh, first string. <laughs> Sliding the whole thing down F add nine and then Lifting that pinky up and then coming back to the G chord. He does that once. <laughs> um, mostly what he does is a lot of G sus4. And that hammer on the over the F. And he kind of does some uh, some linking licks occasionally with those two bottom strings that I showed you earlier. He also inverts our A shape bar chord. So again, going C, F, that would be the standard way of doing it, but Jimmy, the bass 
bass note, and you can see it gives you a whole new flavor. So again, over the F chord, instead of an F in the bass, you've got the A in the bass. So it gives it a completely different flavor. And the same thing for the G, instead of a G in the bass, you've got the B in the bass. Last thing we'll look at, and it's definitely not least because these sliding six are so freaking cool. So he does that one when he's going uh, to the F chord. It's because it's a harmonized sixth run in the F major scale. So we're starting off here with seven and five on the fifth string of the third string. Slide that down two, so you've got three and five on the third and fifth frets. And then when you get down here to open position, it's the C and the A. So not two frets apart, one fret apart and then B and G. He does that twice in the song. There's one time where he's going from a G to a C and he harmonizes the C major scale in reverse. Hopefully you can hear that this is the C major that. So he's here, he's over a G chord. Well, what the hell? I'm right there. I've got these two notes, first and third string at three and four. Slide down, you get a piece of an F chord, right? The third and first string of an F chord. Then fifth fret two and four, third fret two and four, and you can hear that uh, that resolves on of a C chord. Typically with these harmonized six, I've got tons of other lessons on these. Um, check out my uh, Essential Tools um, playlist. Typically you would just be playing them in the scale of the song like this in the key of C major. So when you when he does that one, it's a little a little out of the box uh, because again, it's a harmonized F major scale, but he's leading into an F chord, so it makes sense. All right, that was a lot. If I miss something, you'll pick it up in Greg's video, and uh, I hope you'll enjoy that, and I hope you enjoyed this, and as always, I thank you for joining me. Take care.